When I was younger, my father um, was very, very keen for me to go and memorize Quran. And halfway through memorizing the Quran, I felt there was this huge disconnect between what I was memorizing and the relationship that I was having with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So for some time, I actually started doubting whether or not this religion was the true religion. The biggest concern or the catalyst that made me think like this was predominantly the treatment that I received when I was in Masajid and Islamic centers. I felt sort of distant from everyone. I felt that the Masajid weren't so welcoming. And so I started wondering, why is it that I'm part of a faith where I feel so uh, strange and so uh, almost alienated? So what I did was I started exploring other religions, like maybe Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity, Judaism. And I started looking into all these things, but subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected me. And I was able to come to the conclusion that you do not judge a religion based on the way how the people are. And it's easy to say that, but you hear Muslims saying this all the time, don't judge a religion based on the people, judge it by its core values. As for myself, it was a difficult experience, however, upon realizing that I was so ignorant about Islam, that propelled me to think, well, before I write off this religion, I need to first commit myself and understand it deeply. So I decided to continue my journey of memorizing the Quran, alhamdulillah, and I finished it when I was about 15. And then I got accepted into the University of Medina when I was 17 years old. And I was probably one of the youngest to ever uh, go to Medina. And I spent one year in Arabic over there, and I spent five, the next four years uh, doing a focus on aqidah and da'wah, theology and missiology. So the actual timing when I started doubting was like around when I was 15 and a half to 16. I started exploring other religions, and I found that a lot of those other religions just simply did not make much sense to me. I started reading deeply about the way of how they derived their sources of knowledge, um, there was no sense of like a, an agreed upon aqidah or theology. And so as a result, I had to just sort of stay with what I knew at that time. So my conclusion was before I jump ship onto something else, I need to, f there has to be two things. Number one is I need to know exactly what I'm jumping to, that I'm comfortable with it. And number two is that I'm fully satisfied that the thing that I'm leaving is something that I'm not interested anymore. And so because these two things were not there, I decided that I will stay with whatever I have at the moment. And Alhamdulillah, it was the right decision by the grace of Allah Well, I finished my degree there and I was really interested in pursuing higher studies. And I felt that maybe I could use this as an opportunity to get like a diploma in da'wah but then I thought it's more important that I get da'wah experience by going back to the United States. When I, first did, when I first started reading about Christianity, one of the most important aspects that I, or two important aspects that I felt about it was this overemphasis on putting faith before reason. And the second thing was this overemphasis on God's love. And I, I felt at the beginning, that's very, very nice. God bring you a savior so that you don't have to go, to go to hell for your sins. But then as I kept thinking about it, I couldn't help but feeling really sorry for Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I just thought, why is it that he should pay for our sins? It just doesn't make any sense. Since I was a kid,
I always had to be responsible for what I've done. So why is that someone that I've never met, how can I be so sure that he's going to be willing to take on the heinous crimes that I commit, commit against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So it was, it was this sort of this question that's going on in my head, and I really couldn't wrap my head around it. I believe that Jesus was a Muslim you look through. Uh, the Bible, for example, you will find so many different instances where Jesus is calling people to the submission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You never find anywhere in the Bible where Jesus is calling, to, calling the people to worship Him as the Lord. You went to pursue your master's also. Mm -hmm. Talk about this. Um, so after I came back from uh, Medina University, I started doing da'wah, and I felt that I was successful up to a certain level, that I was able to engage Muslims on a very simple level of saying whether this is right or whether that is wrong. But there were two things that I felt that I needed to improve on myself, and that is number one, I needed to pursue more understanding of religion as a whole with particular emphasis on Christianity so that I can dialogue with Muslims better as well as with Christians. So in between 2009 and 2011, I was accepted uh, for the master's program, Master of Theological Studies at Vanderbilt University out in Nashville. And it was a great opportunity for me to be exposed to Christianity and other uh, especially the Western way of, of understanding religion. You completed it? Yes, I completed it last Mashallah, year, alhamdulillah. Mashallah. And I would say that, and I know it's probably shocking to a lot of people, I better understood Islam after going to Vanderbilt. Mm -hmm. And the reason I would probably say that is, after learning about Christianity and the other religions, I came to appreciate Islam more, not because that I studied another religion in order to validate my own religion. It was, there were certain interesting ways of how other religions view their own texts, some things that maybe I didn't get exposed to while I was in Medina, of critically thinking, of being able to deal with certain topics in a rational way from so many different perspectives, and be able to engage with all types of people from all walks of life. This is an experience that a lot of students that study overseas, like in the Middle East, they don't get. So going to Vanderbilt really enhanced my way of thinking about Islam from a broader picture, and also trying to bridge that gap between uh, the constant struggles that Muslims uh, are in when it comes to, well, Christianity is wrong, or Judaism is wrong, or Buddhism is wrong. What I aim to do is, we don't need to validate our religion by proving another religion is wrong. We need to first study our religion first in order to understand it. I think I also explored Buddhism because my mother, she converted from Buddhism into Islam. So I went in, looked into it, and I finally realized that within Buddhism, there is actually no theology. And for some people, they might think that it's not true, but I really couldn't get my finger on a particular theology on the oneness of Allah or God or whatever it is. Now, as for Hinduism, it was another problem for me, at least, because I couldn't wrap my head around the idea of God being in so many different forms, and that it's just really one God, but they're just emanations and reincarnations of one God. So it's like more like pantheism, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. When I was in that moment of doubt, I realized my biggest weakness was that I try to rely on myself to find the truth. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, when you rely on yourself to find the truth, only Allah knows where you're going to end up at mm -hmm. the end. Yeah. And all of us sitting right here at this moment, we can only pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we will continue to be steadfast on the religion of truth. But for me, 
I am very, very grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I wasn't drawn into another religion. So can, can that person who's confused say, oh, look, so many religions, this one's saying they're the truth, this one's saying they're the truth. What's the first step? That that person that's confused, he like, he's been tuning into the Dean show and it makes sense that there's only one creator. You worship him alone, right. don't worship his creatures, the creators, the uh, creatures, creation that he created, but now he's still got some doubt. What should he do? I think the, the most important aspect is to understand the bedrock of each religion. Don't look at some of the nice things within a religion and judge that religion and accept it based on those small issues. You need to understand the basic fundamental principles. So if you wanted to understand whether Christianity is the truth or not, you need to go in and ask. Is there an agreed upon aqidah among Christians? A theology? Absolutely not. You go into so many different denominations, everyone has a different understanding of who God is, or who Jesus is, and how his role is when it comes to our salvation. But when it comes to Islam, a lot of times people have questions like, what about the issue of hijab, or the beard, or this and that? And I would say to them, that's like, back to the example that you gave about a car, that's like someone wondering, is this Italian leather or is this Spanish leather? And before you ask is this, what kind of leather this is, you need to understand the engine of this car. Mm -hmm. If this engine is sound, who cares if there are tinted windows? Who cares? But the thing is, once you understand that that engine is the right engine that will move you on the road to Jannah, that's religion that you have to take. You have to ask yourself, is this something that I have found to be the truth? And if it is, then take it. Mm -hmm. This has been a great experience hearing your story. It's always great sitting with people such as yourself. And we're out of time. So any closing comments and suggestions, also for those who have the name tag Muslim, but they were in a similar or are in a similar situation, they go to the university and everything's calling them, right. the desires start heating up, it's tough out there, and now they start doubting. What advice do you give for them, Shay? I would say very, very briefly two things. Number one is, learn from my mistake of almost writing off a religion based on the way how people treated me. Know the foundation of that religion and go and study it. Understand it before you come to a conclusion that this religion or whatever religion it is is either right or wrong. Number two is, for the past 10 years, I realized that a lot of uh, individuals or young people in America, there's this revival in interest in studying about Islam. But I would say to them, that's just the first step. You can study all you want, but you have to put everything into practice and you have to acquaint yourself with other sciences, not just simply understanding hadith and fiqh. So you're not just an imam, but you're an imam with skills in other fields to help the Muslim community.